Welcome to episode 80 of Crave the Book. In today's episode, Amber and I are covering chapters 6 through 13 of Tracy Wolf's Court. And in this episode, Grace and the Unkillable Beast are heading to the Gargoyle Court. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're finally at episode 80. Whee! 80. Which... This is our second court episode. It would have been cooler to have episode 80 be the first episode of court. Yeah, but we, we're not round numbers. We don't we don't plan this. We don't, <laughs> you, you guys think we plan this? We don't plan anything. We know nothing. Um, we also um, read a lot more than we normally do. Well, yeah, we're going to have to if we ever want to get through this book. Um, so... <laughs> Lots to discuss today in chapters six through thirteen of court. Um, uh, we, yeah, I mean, one of one of my points is literally a paragraph. So yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, and and guys, there are going to be massive spoilers, so make sure that you listen out for the wolf howl if you have not finished court. Was there anything from? No, there weren't any charm spoilers. So we should no, be no, because I mean it was it was all grace on her own. So yeah, yeah, nothing really. So yeah. no, no charm spoilers. Uh, but if you haven't finished court yet, you'll want to bounce out when you hear the wolf howl. Um, so last we left off, Grace was, you know, laying in bed with Hudson. They had just gotten back to Catmere Academy. Um, and, and the school is just in ruins. Everything is, all the students are gone. Um, all the furniture and everything's broken. And they are kind of waiting for Luca's parents to arrive to pick up his dead body. I mean, it's just, it's bad news bears. Um, but one thing that made me laugh was, Grace said, Cyrus is unlikely to send the wolves after us now that he's got the students. And I'm just like, LOL, bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She also made a lot of um, like parallels between right at the beginning of Crave and Court. It was almost like she was retracing her steps um, because she was, she was saying like that there would be wolves at the door ready to throw her out to like kill her like murderous wolves and she was like oh it's not unlike my first day <laughs> yeah she notices um, the noticed. chess table yep she ran up the stairs two at a time which was how Flint carried her which means that like she's fitter yeah as a person like when she arrived there she was huffing a and puffing weak thing and like can you imagine arriving to your first like day of school at a boarding school and a guy carries you up the stairs because you're unable to <laughs> like I'd be mortified but now she's capable of doing it on her own under her own power so it's kind of like a, a you know that scene in Rocky where he's finally able to run up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> I hope she does that pose at the top like yeah <laughs> yeah she um she's leapt out of bed with Hudson because she's heard the unkillable beast just yelling no time no yep. time which you know what that's how I feel right now Mm -hmm. um, just she no was time. wrong. Uh, we, we were wrong. Uh, she got a full seven hours, which is a, a healthy amount. But then she uh, goes and takes sleep. more. She takes another nap. Yeah, she she does a a typical. Oh, this is a, oh, this does look really comfortable. I don't even need to take my shoes off. I just just rest my head here, and then realizes that she slept another two hours. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. Macy, um, Macy's been asleep this whole time. Hudson's been asleep. Actually, everybody, I think, has been asleep. Um, but then the Unkillable Beast wakes her up again, yelling. So she decides to get out of bed. She After she's packed herself a nice little survival bag of jeans, hair ties, first aid kit, T-shirts, and Pop-Tarts. <laughs> yep. And uh, I have a, a little thing about Pop-Tarts if uh, no one has seen the announcement yet. Yes. Walmart is it Walmart yes. or is it Target? It's Walmart. Walmart um, will be releasing Cherish special edition pop tarts for the launch of the book. Um, so make sure you go and get your box. I will attempt um, to try to find you one, um, but I have a feeling I, that it's going to be like a. I also don't like pop tarts. 
Well, yeah, but you want the box, right? <laughs> the <laughs> Just ones the packaging. Yeah, the cool box, super cool box. Um, I wanted. Well, I, I'm gonna attempt to get them, but here's the thing: what will likely happen, and what has happened with every single uh, crave release, is that I go to the store on the day when it's supposed to be shelved, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, it's they're, they're what book? <laughs> we're, uh, what what are you talking? <laughs> oh, yeah, those are probably still packaged in the back. We haven't opened." <laughs> And well, can you go open it for me? Yeah. And then they stomp back there all pissed off at me. So I will attempt to find the Pop Tarts, but I've. You never know. I might like, I like, I like that flavor though. I think that the only cherry. ones that we can kind of really get here are the chocolate ones and the yeah. strawberry ones that look like rainbow sprinkles on top. The cherry ones Those kind the... of taste the same as the oh, strawberry. Yeah. They're the only ones that we can really get. And they're so expensive for nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'll try. I'll see if I can get my hands on a box to send to you. Um, okay. It's not like they're a special flavor. They're probably just going to be... It's, it's just the box. It's just and the th box. There was a, a few other updates, which I'll, I think I, I sent you a screenshot. Yeah, I'd, I'd seen it. Um, basically, uh, Sweet Vengeance is being pushed back. Uh, Starbringer is going to be releasing soon. I can't remember when. And you can pre-order. Yeah, you can pre-order. I did read the synopsis for that one. It's going to be more of a science fiction kind of space odyssey and there's a, type. There's competition as well. The Crave trailer contest to win an ARC of Cherish will be posted on Friday. Oh, I didn't see. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. I saw that. The, um, I and also Tracy is working on an updated Catmere guide, uh, which will be actually printed, which means that this is definitely the end of the series. Yeah, Because that's... she wouldn't print it unless she has got all of the things in it. Yeah, that'll definitely be. Uh, that's indicator that Crave is done. But Sweet Vengeance will be kind of picking up as well. So, But there might be things in the Catmere guide that haven't that hasn't been said in sweet vengeance yet because she hasn't got a date specifically for uh, cat my guide yeah so she's probably gonna update it to be all yeah. inclusive okay cool yeah so uh, that, that's that's the uh, the crave news yeah crave, <laughs> crave news bulletin we don't know we need like that little that little sound that plays on news channels du -du 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 yeah Du, 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 du. Breaking oh, news. The there's, there's always a globe in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Swirling. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so Grace, uh, she she gets woke up by the unkillable beast, and mm -hmm. she sees him downstairs, standing by the broken chess table, holding the vampire queen, which is again parallel to when she first got to Catmere, and Jackson had picked yeah. up. The vampire yep. queen. And he's being really cryptic. Like, really, really cryptic. But I... You know when you're reading it and you're like, the cryptic isn't his fault. He just is incapable of actually stringing a sentence together. Um, and uh, I, I'm actually finding that I'm that way. Um, so I don't know whether you guys are aware, but I actually have a stammer. Um, I, I'm, like, I struggle to get a sentence out from start to finish without getting, like, stuck on a word. And it's to do with not talking in public to a lot of people. So when you start to kind of preempt that you're going to trip over your words, you do. Um, and that's why I think that this this unkillable beast has is that he's been in isolation for over a thousand years. He's not socialized himself and he's like tripping up over his words. He can't physically get his words out because it's such an unnatural thing for him to do on a day to day basis. He should draw a picture. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, he, if, if, if she just gave him like some crayons and a coloring yeah, book. Um, and it's a little bit of spoiler to like what happens later on in the chapters that we have read. Um, but I think that the whole conversation would have gone a lot, lot faster if he was able to like use the telepathic connection that they have. Yeah. Um, but that even seems to be stunted. Yeah, because um, we, do, we do we really do realize why later on. Yeah, he's not articulate at all um, in her mind, and hasn't been since the beginning when she first, no. you know, in Crave. She's like, "Ooh, spooky tree! Something is telling yeah. me to stay away from the spooky tree." Yeah. Um, so we we find out that he is essentially being shouted at and spoken to by everyone. 
Yeah. And it's hard for him to think straight because he's got all these voices going on in his head. And I'm like, no, this dude, same every day. Yeah. Yeah. So many voices. Save me. Messenger messages. Ba-ding, ba-ding. Yes. Um. <laughs> Notifications. <laughs> um. Um, and yeah, when the, from my first read through, um, uh, I thought that the zap between the Uncurable Beast and Grace was a mating bond again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, she didn't. Well, it was like because the exact same way that it happened with Jackson at the yeah. chess table. And those like the last two, she didn't even feel. So I was like, well, maybe she's actually like co- like conscious of this. <laughs> she's she didn't touch his face though, like she did Jackson's. No. Yeah. So but every every time she's like kind of described him, it's not like he's particularly old, like. I'm guessing 30s, like late 30s, yeah, like early he's 40s. A sugar daddy, yeah, sugar, sugar daddy. Because <laughs> apparently Hudson and Jackson are not already sugar daddy level. He just needs to add a bit of salt and pepper to be able to be sugar and salt daddy. <laughs> yeah, but he's Gramps, which we he, find out yeah. they they get um, when she touches him, she turns into a gargoyle, and then just kind of finds herself in the mist which that's a total a total movie scene she's looking around just in a misty area only and yeah. he's, he's the only thing in there and at first she thinks that maybe he's betrayed her maybe he's working for cyrus but as the mist clears um first of all he's talking articulately second he is in nice clean um you know uh i don't know what time period we're thinking but he's in a tunic and breaches well, it was a thousand, thousand years wasn't it yeah a thousand years i think so yeah so that would make sense and then um and then there's you know a big giant castle and he's like oh yeah by the way this is the gargoyle court um which you know let me start by saying that she's she's confused about where she is she has no idea you know she hears the ocean and she starts you know thinking about being back home but i'm like uh you know, all this talk of castles, Grace, you should know that you're not in Kansas anymore because we don't have <laughs> castles. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you, you don't even have anything close to a castle, really. You have the things that, like, people have, like, taken brick by brick and rebuilt. And those are tiny. The, the In Ohio, we have the Piat castles, but they're, like, this. I mean, I've seen mansions that are significantly larger. They are, they are called castles, but they are large pointy brick houses pointy brick houses. <laughs> yeah they're they're not castles uh, they're just very pretty brick manors yeah. yeah so we we have like so many dotted around because we we've got different types of castles so we've got the ones where the the kings and queens would actually go to stay um, and still stay as well. Um, so we've got all of the, the royal family castles that they bow moral and places like that. But then we also have the ones that just people just went, nah, this is shit. And just <laughs> <Leave> left it. <laughs> it. Yeah. And they're just, just holy buildings just kind of crumbling to the ground. And people just drive past them every day like, Ugh, wish they'd do something about that council. <laughs> just, it's like a pothole. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, when when you come to visit... We will take you on a castle tour and and not be like this is every child's nightmare of ch- like like childhood where their parents drag you let's go see the castle and like I don't want to go see the castle. Um, <laughs> It'll be fascinating like, we'll, we'll for take, us. We'll we'll take you to the ones like really crumbled down. But like this is how much we don't care about castles. <laughs> we just left it to ruin. Um, and then we also have fake castles which were set up as decoys for enemy lines to not really know that they were about to storm literally a facade (laughs) so you you march up to it and up until the point where you could go like go around the corner of it you realize it's just a 2d wall (laughs) oh yeah well we we have we have cornfields whoa (laughs) whoa whoa (laughs) Um, and then we'll we'll also take you to like really like fancy ass houses where they've got like the big swinging staircases, which is like you can get married in places like that and stuff, and uh, just show you just how boring they are. Well, we'll be us. we'll be fascinated. 
will be fascinating. Yeah, like yeah, we'll go. Like you, you, you go run the grounds. You, you go find all of the weird things, like the moat. <laughs> <laughs> give me a scavenger hunt checklist. Yeah, you like give you a little bingo sheet. <laughs> Grace said that this castle had a moat. She, I mean, the way that she described it, it was very large. Granted, we didn't get to see any of it, but it opened up into a large courtyard um, where all of the gargoyle, the gargoyle army. Mm -hmm. were standing mm -hmm. and fighting which to be perfectly honest based on the cover of court i was they did say that they were all carrying giant shields but they said giant swords and never never once in court does anybody have a big double-sided like battle axe like is on the cover of the book and i'm very disappointed like a halberd i was really I, I was hoping that you know I, I mean even if a couple of them had like super cool weapons or the <laughs> went full on dwarf yeah yeah <laughs> i'm my axe <laughs> a, we need somebody with a big hammer we need somebody with a mace yeah. all the things yeah um i mean like th this is all like happening as well and this guy who's who's told him that her name her he's told her that his name is alistair as if it's the most natural thing he's like stop calling me unkillable beast darling it's alistair my friends called me Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, if, if he didn't tell her his name, how long before she was like, what do I call you, Beast, sir? Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I love your burgers. Before, yeah, like, how long would it be before she needed to refer to him and didn't have a name? That was, <laughs> that was nice. Like, all of them are a little bit derogatory. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Beast. <laughs> and uh, yeah he puts all of the big reveals like oh my name is like alistair by the way i'm your grandfather yes the entire army is fine we're in ireland um yeah uh my my mate would rather be biting you than be a gargoyle because she has a superiority complex like he puts all of them in one single sentence and grace is just like sat there getting whiplash like she doesn't know which which one of the things he's just mentioned is the most important to like to start with. Like, which one do I tackle first? There, there are so many punches within that that I have no clue what to to start with. I mean, even when she asks, she really doesn't get answers to any of them. No, it's like you're my grandfather, and he's like, well, actually, I'm like your great 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 grandfather. But uh, let's just just ignore the greats. <laughs> um. And uh, yeah, he he says that he recognizes his mate's power within her. Um, so Grace is like, "Oh, like like a gargoyle strength." And he goes, "No, she's not gargoyle. She would she'd rather die than be a gargoyle." <laughs> Grace is asking all the wrong questions. She should be like, "Okay, what is her name? Where's yeah. the last place you saw her?" Oh, you know, the thing is, even if he told her. her it, her name. I was struggling with pronouns today. Even if he told her her name, she wouldn't know who it was. <laughs> That's well. She's heard the name, not to spoil I anything, but she, she has heard I don't the think name she'd before. Make the connection. She's an idiot. Y you're right. You're right. She's she's an idiot. She she would know. She's heard the name before, but she wouldn't be able to put all the pieces yeah. together. He's like, oh, you've not met her. That's really strange. I thought that she would try and be close to you. It's like, <laughs> dude, no one has explained a single situation to Grace since this all began. Yeah, I love how none I, of it. I love how she ins. She tries to insert like little life situations. Like I, I was gonna be a marine conservationist in LA and. <laughs> <laughs> and make my van or my uh, gargoyle court by the ocean and like she's just grace yep nobody cares talk l ask questions what's really funny is that she was planning on having a superhuman job after <laughs> 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 she's like i know what i want to do study algae mm -hmm. like i don't know about anybody who has ever thought i want to be a marine biologist i have sat in a marine biology lecture to take notes for i think he was blind or deaf or something there was um a job that i did as a as a, as a student which was a note taker for disabled students so i would be able to, to write notes a lot faster than them um and a bit more coherent and i would be able to like, give it to them at the end of the class and i went and sat in a marine biology lecture and oh my god it was the most dullest thing ever for such a subject that i was like oh my god there's going to be dolphins there's going to be turtles there's going to be whales no, no. Plankton. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, but it made me think, I was like, what if she's a supernatural marine conservationist and is going to study where crabs? Well, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the only it's the only logical explanation because, I mean, no spoilers, but like, you know. Based- I'm just a little bit annoyed that this thing came out. There was a marine bite, like she wants to be a marine conservationist. It's like such a throwaway little thing that that's what she's wanted to be her entire life. Apparently, it's come out of nowhere. And at no point when Hudson or Jackson mentions that there are mermaids and sulkies and sirens, she didn't go, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Tell me more. Mer people. Like, she didn't say anything. She just went, oh, okay. She could be a mer people doctor. She could be. That would be a great job for her missed opportunities but no she's yeah. going to study m- micro zooplankton and <laughs> fish guts amoeba <laughs> <laughs> kelp <laughs> um, um yeah and then uh she, she's talking about how um the, uh, the mate is like, so she has a gargoyle. And he goes, no, my mate would bite you or turn you into something slimy. Amoeba. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. This is why she's supposed to be a marine conservation. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be turned into an eel. <laughs> Jellyfish. Because <laughs> at this point, we have no idea who her, who her grandmother is. <laughs> and Grace likes to piss people off. So maybe... <laughs> I mean, I, the first time she meets her grandmother, her grandmother's like, "No, into an eel." <laughs> <laughs> a newt. She'd make a great newt. Newt. <laughs> um, and yeah, then she's she's watching all of the fighting happening, where like all of the gargoyles are like bouncing and stuff. And and I have never read this sentence before in my life. Really? I don't remember it's, it from it's, the first time round. It sounds very British. Are you sure? I know. <laughs> and I'm going to start using it in my everyday language. <laughs> ass over tea kettle. Yeah, he flew He flew ass over tea kettle. Yeah. What? So we say ass over tit. We don't Do say, say any. Ass over tit? No. Oh, no. When you, fl- when you fly ass over tit, that's when you, you know that that person really fell over. Um... <laughs> Yeah, we s- and it makes me wonder whether she's heard Hudson say it and has not remembered the exact phrase and then went, tea kettle's British. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like something that she would adopt from him. We we just say that, I mean, if somebody like fell, we say, oh, they just ate shit. You're so eloquent. Yeah, he ate, sh- you know, you fall, you fall and you ate shit. Oh, man, I just ate shit on the stairs. <laughs> yeah. No, I fell ass over tit. <laughs> ass over tit. I took a, uh, we, we also have the um, the sayings that only old people say. So when, when you're getting old and frail and you're definitely like using a Zimmer frame and a walker and things like that, and then you're always like, I took, I took a spill. <laughs> <laughs> I took a topple. Yeah, they always are like, oh, I had a fall. Nobody, nobody <laughs> under the age of 50 says, I had a fall. Because <laughs> you'd like the person that you told the story to would be like, is this going to be an interesting story? Where's where's the humor in it? Like, can I laugh yet? Anybody over the age of 50, I had a fall, which means I am on warfarin and <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> I've, nearly, I've nearly died. Yeah. This is a <laughs> catastrophic incident. Yep. Um, so yeah, and uh, why is nobody interested that the the king is back, Mister Mister Disdain, the douche, fucking disdain, disdain, I got chapstick, chapstick. Yeah, he. <laughs> I f- I forgot that our whole when when court came out last year, and Amber and I just we crammed a whole the whole book into one episode of the podcast because we read yep. through the book like the week it came out so we could do the podcast on it. Um, we. We both just had our own nicknames for him. And I completely yes. forgot. Like, my brain had wiped that out until I read it. And I was like, ah, oh, disdain, the douche. Yeah. Disdain, chastise, <laughs> chapstick. Chapstick. Yeah. He's the only one. I mean, his eyes get big when he sees 
you know, the king back, but it's not, you know, I'm, I'm comparing. Oh, it's like, oh, thanks, coming back from your trip, not <laughs> you've been missing for a thousand years. Right, it would be like, it's like, it's like Court of Thorns and Roses when Reese returns to the night court and it's like an emotional thing where he's reunited with his family and he's been tortured and they're just like, oh, hey, what's up, dude, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> where you been? Yeah. 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 And who's this teenager you fraud? Right. Why? Oh, so it's like that, is it? Good job, man. Yeah. yeah. And then it gets even weirder because he presents Grace with more terrible jewelry. <laughs> she now has an ugly necklace from Jackson, a big giant diamond from Hudson, a promise ring. She has the crown on her hand. So I guess that, that one doesn't really count. Um, but that now she has a big giant emerald ring that he has mm -hmm. placed on her finger without giving she didn't want it yeah and she doesn't under she has no idea what it is he's just put a ring on her finger like here you go and then like all of the gargoyles kneeled before her <laughs> which i, I love to say this because that's not awkward at all <laughs> yeah like who the hell are <laughs> like, you i know i feel you there like if everybody in a room just suddenly turned to me and bowed i'd be so uncomfortable i would just stand there like wide 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 eyed with my legs like in in that like terror stance and then i just stand and pee <laughs> <laughs> it's like what did i just sign myself up to I would just dribble, dribble down my leg. Yeah. It would start to, you would see it cut, soak through the pants, like slowly starting as a small <laughs> spot and growing. <laughs> I, m I may even do that comical, like turn around to see who's behind me. <laughs> like, oh, am I supposed to be bowing? <laughs> I might even bow too and nobody knows. <laughs> I'd start, I'd start like a, an awkward dance, like. <laughs> so you do know who I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah and uh and then chapstick like <laughs> challenges the king to a duel or like swords and stuff and uh, like he's like yeah all right I'll, I'll 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 do that i'll do the duel like immediately like somersaulting and flipping and rolling <laughs> and like proper bashing each other in like at no point were punches pulled and I was like, dude, you've been asleep for a thousand years. Like, stretch first. You're gonna pull something. It's like, <laughs> like, have you like when have you seen like in Star Wars how Yoda like jumps and flips around? It's like how yeah. I'm, I'm picturing him just jumping and flipping and ridiculous air acrobatics. Yeah, after being a fucking mountain for mm -hmm. a thousand years, like he hasn't even like rolled his shoulders or like. He's done, he's done he's done no stretches he's done no warm-up he's just jumped straight into that and i'm like dude you are gonna get a stitch and he's only had cook cookies and water right <laughs> yeah and he also keeps running off and disappearing <laughs> he's going to mr beast burger <laughs> <laughs> that i think that that's the episode title mr beast burgers mr beast burgers yep yep all right okay i'm typing that into our notes okay yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, there's the point where um, fucking Chapstick comes over with a sword um, and is like, your turn. <laughs> Grace is just like, so no, Grace no, no. is like, no, <laughs> not a chance. Um, and uh, oh, no, he also, um, he looks at Alistair with this like massive kind of resentment that Alistair won the battle. And Grace notices it and it makes her uncomfortable like immediately. Yeah, like this is the general of the army and he's his king. Um and because Alistair bested it in battle, like Chastain kind of gets this massive like chip on his shoulder, um, and pulls a face, like, How dare you win against me? Yeah. It was it was uncomfortable to read as well. Um it was like a sore loser thing. Yeah, and then immediately childish. comes over to Grace. Yeah, and then immediately comes over to Grace. It's like your turn. And she's like, absolutely not, no. Um, and uh, like this is my massive, massive note, and I'll read it <laughs> word for word. I, I may, I may ad lib. Um, so reading the first time round, I was disappointed that the general and the king were so disgusted that Grace would not pick up this sword. She says, I'm not that kind of queen, but she's literally an 18 year old girl. Uh, it was maybe her way of di diminishing responsibility for what a monarch may have to do in their eyes, where they're just like, 
you are a queen. It doesn't matter that you don't want to be queen. You are a queen. It's your duty. Right. Well, on my second read through, on. I realised what would an 18 year old queen have already learned by now okay. had it been a thousand years ago? I mean, if if she was dueling out a punishment, like, you know, if it, if it was one of those like Game of Thrones moments where like, you know, I would take him up to the hill, you know, I sentence mm -hmm. you to death type moment, like that would make sense. But he, I mean, the assumption, first of all, that you know what she's clearly in clothing not of the time that they wouldn't be able yep. to recognize i'm sure that she looks quite different and then there she's she has already stated multiple times that she is significantly smaller than all of them i mean yep. i really do i feel like it was it was a purposeful like i have lost so now yeah. i am going to divert attention away from me and make you feel inferior and make you feel inferior exactly yeah it's an immediate disrespect thing. Because mm -hmm. I, I was just like, I, I understand that, like, imagine waiting a thousand years for your king to return and your king immediately steps down and passes the buck to this 18-year-old girl who refuses to pick up a sword. Like, how disappointed you would be. Yeah. Right? Because you're like, well, how, I, I've been practicing sword fighting and and and, and learning how to, to win this battle because we still have a common enemy that has made us be be here like hiding in 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 our court um but no, i'm so here like no one's bothered to explain that grace literally doesn't know what's going on i mean she 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 couldn't even work out that they were in ireland yeah without a little bit of help uh, or that they were speaking Gaelic. She can't even make the connection of like, oh, we're in Ireland. They're speaking a weird language. That must be Gaelic. Like, she's completely clueless. And they're like, here, have a sword. And she's like, no. I value my life. And the other person's life. Because I, I genuinely, even though I feel like I wouldn't be able to handle a sword, I would still fear for the other person's life. Not through my own skill, but through my ineptitude. Yeah. And she immediately associates it with her, like, I don't want to hurt someone. I don't want yeah. to. Which, you know, clearly isn't what ha what's happening. This is very much a controlled practice scenario. Um, but she immediately, it, it almost would be the same as taking someone who's never shot a gun and handing mm -hmm. them a gun and saying, let's let's practice shooting. No, I don't want to touch that. That that kills people. Well, no, not necessarily. It does in the wrong hands and you're not even teaching me. Exactly, exactly. She's, she's Like, I wouldn't even know how to turn the safety on and off. Right, and she doesn't even know how to hold the sword that is likely, you know, very heavy that she wouldn't even mm -hmm. be able to lift. It, it, I really do think that it's a it's a power play. I, I, I think it's a let's see what she can do. Let's yeah. see. Let's, let's test her and see how she reacts. Yeah, but like all, all of that was kind of like, okay, that, that was Chastain being, uh, A, a presumptuous prick, or B, trying to get a rise out of her and show her up in front of her new subjects because immediately she loses their respect. Yeah. And she hadn't even had a conversation with any of them. But then when she notices that Alistair's like storming away from Chastain after having this dis like the heated discussion, it's very obvious that it's about her. And Alice is like, come on, we're leaving. And she's like, why? Like, what, what, what's wrong? He's like, don't worry about it. And it's like, you, you're you already not telling your queen. You have, you have relinquished your role. You have stepped down from the throne and you've put somebody in power and you're not giving her all of the fucking cards. Yeah. She's only ever going to be at a disadvantage because you've not given her all of the information. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I've got to go find my mate. Bye. And, and yeah, and there's no context there. There's no like how, how you know, oh, you'll be able to yeah. get back to your court someday. Oh, you know, this is how you summon your army. This is how like she this is what the ring means. Right. Like wh what the ring means, wh how they got there in the first place. Like she she literally knows nothing. She got to see a glimpse of it and then and then mm -hmm. it was gone. So. He, he also asks a really probing question of like, oh, so you can hear them now, right? And she's like, no. And he's like, oh. 
well, it will come in time, not really understanding that it kind of all... Imagine being an 18-year-old girl, just being given the role of queen. The guy who's supposed to be your grandfather and was king have just like dumped this on you and is like, oh, okay, bye. And then all of a sudden you have every single voice that was in that court suddenly in your head. Yeah. It's it's like, like he's not even given her like he struggled with it. Right. The only person that was able to stop it was her grandmother. And we don't even know who that is. So even if she did have it, how is she going to be able to cope with all those voices in her head? Like he's not giving her any coping mechanisms. Like, well, when it does happen, this these are the things that help. He's like disappointed that she hasn't got the thing that the very thing that he hates. Yeah, it rem it reminds me of like um like in in Twilight with the werewolves how like right when they're in wolf form it's like just a blaring mm -hmm. cacophony of all the other wolf voices. Yeah. And I'm wondering whether any of them are even like controlled. Like are they all just kind of like where the, the wolves are where that you you're hearing every single thought whether it's something that they're trying to hide from you or not like she's going to listen to a load of a crappy conversation she doesn't really want to listen to and b she's going to have secrets and stuff in her head if that's the case yeah yeah it's it, or is it like a phone call you know can they yeah. can they just like, ring like, in when they need like madam dear <laughs> grace <laughs> like a prayer. Yeah, they're sitting by their bed with their hands clasped. Let's say grace. <laughs> Let's say grace. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was, I was just really like disappointed with everybody other than Grace in this chapter. Normally I'm frustrated with Grace because she's clueless. But at this point, absolutely anybody in the world would have been in exactly the same position as her. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I would have what is going on everything is happening way too fast you're you've not even introduced anybody other than the general of this army like is there anybody else because i've already disappointed him yeah other than the one the one um female gargoyle that you know was standing beside her yeah when they were fighting and she's like they're great aren't they like but she yeah. she hasn't talked to anybody else. I was yeah. I was kind of like even though the the situation was really crap. Um I was impressed that they didn't actually pressure her to try the sword fighting even though she'd said no. Um like she said no and they went, "Oh, why?" and she says, "I'm not that kind of queen." And then immediately in, instead of going like, "No, no, no, go on. Go on like try it. Try it. Try it." Like really pressure her. They just went like just disappointed and kind of left it um but that would have made the situation 10 times worse yeah because you're like just being told repeatedly oh no 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 no! try it try it like you'll love it you'll really like it you'll have you'll be fine you'll have you'll you have a great time no i will not i know that i am not a sword fighter and i will never be a sword fighter and i'll probably never be good at sword fighting even if i pay a hundred thousand pounds in lessons I my hand eye coordination is not great. I'm not physically fit. And I also don't like hurting people. So why would this be a skill that I would try to perfect? Yeah, and why is it why is it essential for I mean in in, in Me. if we're talking about like historically, how many queens have realistically outside of fantasy books been on the battlefield, you know, leading their mm -hmm. armies? It's not it's not realistic. They're, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. Are you ready to I'd get also on be to looking at, oh, go I'd also be looking at the army going like, well, you're all so good. Like, what would be the point in me fucking it up? Right, right. I'm a liability. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, spoilers. Yeah. I did not have any spoilers um, because everything that, you know, most of what we, we, we already know how the story goes. Um, so I'll I'll let you lead the way, but I'm sure I will have things to sprinkle. Yeah. Um. So we when we when we first read through this, we all kind of thought that the Uncle Beast was trying to communicate about Delilah with the chess piece, like the vampire queen. Um. But now on the second retro, I'm like, of course he's trying to like go like the the vampire queen. She's my mate. 
Oh, I didn't. Because she was. I didn't. I didn't make that connection at all that he was trying mm-hmm. to express that that was the blood letter. Yeah, because when they were together as as mates, she was vampire queen, wasn't she? Yes. Yeah, she was the vampire queen, and also the um, she was like a, she was a warlord, um, and then mm-hmm. you know I wonder if when Jackson in, in Crave, I wonder if he was also not referring to his mother. It's possible. I mean, because I, I dare say that he's more can more intimidated by though his mother did scar him. I feel like he's more mm-hmm. intimidated by the blood letter than he is by his mother. Yeah, I think he has more of a love care relationship with the blood letter as well. Anyway, so even if he he's more likely to disappoint her. Yeah, he respects her more. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But yeah, I was just thinking like at no point did Alistair kind of give her the peace with fear or anything and then when she was saying like oh and then um yeah no don't worry we'll we're gonna fight cyrus and delilah he's like no and she's she thinks that he he's saying like don't fight delilah but he's actually going no i'm not talking about delilah (laughs) right yeah i didn't get that at all um that just blew right over my head and even then, he's still trying to kind of say who she is, but not say her name. And I'm kind of wondering whether he's actually unable to. Because what kind of oh. spoiler would it be for him to tell her? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's he's given every information apart from her name or who she is. Because immediately, if he, if he said who it was, she'd be like, oh, I know exactly who that is. Well, he wouldn't know her as the blood. Her. Well, the blood letter actually is what she was known by uh, in as that you know kind of warlord character. I think that that was like her. Yeah, it's not. A, it's not a new name. No, it's kind of more of like her little her signature. Yeah, and just a bit of just like I feel like he's unable to say her name, and it's not necessarily like a magical spell or anything. I think it's just a, he may have forgotten her name. Yeah. Like, he refers to her as my mate, my mate, my mate. He refers to her as, like, oh, she would bite you or turn you into slimy, slimy. He has all of the, like, love effects as well. Like, he's talking her about her warmly and how he is reminiscing and he wishes that he could see her. Like, oh, could you bring her to me? Like, could you bring her here? But at no point does he refer to her as a name or any other details because he must have been obsessing over who she is but probably never mentioning her name. Yeah. And maybe... Like, he's remembering, a, a like, a, a, a feeling, the emotion, her face, but not necessarily her name. Yeah. When he was in the cave, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, he was trying to remember vital... I mean, but the, it's very odd because he can he can see Grace clearly because he sent signals to Grace throughout the series, and she has been to the Blood Letters Cave multiple times, and I don't think he's communicated at all with her when she's been there. But maybe it's because of the wards that are yeah. outside of the cave. And he also mentioned to her um, saying that she's being particularly stubborn right now, mm-hmm. which we know is the Blood Letter refusing to come out of the cave because of Cyrus. Yeah um so yeah i'm I'm kind of wondering whether the reason why he's n- he was kind of expecting her to be there like i'm free where is she yeah like why wasn't she waiting for me and then he's like oh she's being particularly stubborn right now because he kind of checks he, t- he he disappears for a bit he did he goes all like blurry eyed doesn't he yeah it, like he's and he goes, seeking no, she's her still out. alive she's still she's still kicking <laughs> yeah it's very weird um, so yeah um, and then on the same sort of vein, um, when he says that he recognises his mate's power, he he said um, that I would recognise that power anywhere when he's talking about Grace. It's not uh, talking about the gargoyle power or the vampire power that she has. It's, it's the semi-god, demigod power, um, which is interesting because there is an equal and opposite version that Grace could have been. Like, imagine if he had met Isadora and not, recognized which mother it was 
Yeah, that's... I mean, maybe maybe because they're kind of connected by a bloodline, there's a, a little bit of, you know, like something familiar. familiar. Maybe there's like an essence of... Yeah. But can you just imagine, like, meeting Isadora first and thinking that that was your granddaughter? <laughs> She's just a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. And then my final one was just a fucking chapstick. God, I hate him. <laughs> like, I just remember, like, the moment that he came in, I remembered everything that he says and does for the rest of the book. Like, even when he tries to redeem himself, I still hate him. Oh, yeah. He's 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 a character that Tracy has specifically designed to have zero redeeming qualities whatsoever. Yeah. I don't even think... And he's, he's not even, a, like, evil. No. He's just a dick. Yeah. He's and in, and like a smarmy git. Does he does he ever redeem himself? I can't even remember. He's such a throwaway character. Um he does when Grace suddenly finally is able to talk to the gargoyle caught in her head and asks for help with the arm and he's like why would we ever ask help from you? And she kind of explains herself and saying the only reason that I demanded the godstone from you was to save the children. Yeah. And he said, if you had said that, we would have handed it over with no resistance. We are, um, what's the, what's the word? It's not, it's not the balance thing for gargoyles. It's the, we, we make sure that nobody's ever hurt. We, 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 we never want anybody to be harmed. Right. They're, pro they're protectors. Protectors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when that said, he's like, oh, I realize now that you are the queen for us after all. You just didn't know how to talk to us. And I'm like, dude, you never made it easy for her to talk to you. <laughs> like, you were trying to catch her out at every single point. And then you tried to usurp her as well and said that the army is is his and not hers. Um and I think she also said, look, I'm not trying to take your army away from you. You will always be the general. I don't want to be the general because the King Alistair says that she's the general of the army. And she's like, wait, what? And I think she gives the general position to Chastain in for the um, the big battle. Yeah. And she, she says, like, I don't want to be the general. I'm happy to be the queen, but I don't want to be the general. And then he's like, oh, I has still have a role. I'm so special. Yeah. It's like, well, you're not like taking me out of the picture. It's like, no, dude, you seem to have like a proper complex. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That was my father's final point was just like, I, I, I'm not looking forward to the pages about him because no. I just hate him. Yeah. In fact, th those, I mean, I, I remember, I remember so little about him and I forgot that he existed just because I know I, I remember now how absolutely miserable I was reading the chapters where she had mm -hmm. to communicate with him frequently. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's all in character development. It's basically making sure that Grace is being a diplomat and working as like an advocate for the gargoyle court not necessarily working with easy people, but she's working with hard people. It's not good or evil. It's there's a million shades of gray in between. And, and some people are out for their own selfish gain. And sometimes she have to kind of work with those people. Um, Like it was good to read her character arc as like, she didn't let him win, but also she still compromised with him yeah she was she was willing to meet in the middle because it the the main thing was that it was it was all misunderstandings due to lack of mm -hmm. communication but once once everybody's intentions were communicated um you know nobody was wrong particularly no so apart from the way that he dealt with it right right just being an asshole <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right. Well, um, guys, thanks so much for listening. Um, we are going to be attempting to read through Court in larger chunks. That way, maybe when Cherish comes out, we'll do what we did with Court, do a full episode about it, um, and, and you know, read through it really fast. That way we can kind of dedicate some time to 
you know, hanging out with everybody who finishes the book and wants to discuss it with somebody because I know how stressful it can be when, you know, you're not allowed to discuss the book in any groups um, due to spoilers. But yeah, that, that'll be a lot of fun. So guys, thanks so much for listening and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.